That was emotional. So I got a chance to see Black Panther Wakanda forever last night on opening night of the film, and it was one of the most emotional experiences that I can remember when watching a movie. Within the first five minutes of this film, I was a puddle, I was crying, it was incredibly heart-wrenching, just the way that they opened this movie, and to be completely honest, I have no idea how they picked up the pieces after the death of Chadwick Boseman and managed to make a full film, a sequel to Black Panther without T'Challa. And throughout this film, everything just felt sort of surreal and just very strange. And I think the story of this movie is literally just about the grief that all of these characters feel and all of the actors playing them feel in real life, uh, losing such a talented actor in that role. I actually didn't know this, but the script for Black Panther 2 is actually written before Chadwick Boseman passed away. So essentially they had to scrap that entire story and rewrite it from scratch and change the course of probably the MCU along the way. And I'm gonna be completely honest, I think they nailed it. One of the things I was most curious about going into this film was how they were gonna handle the passing of Chadwick Boseman, how you're going to address the fact that a character is in one movie and then just not in the next movie. And they handled it, in my opinion, in the best way they could have, which was blending real life and fiction together to explain why T'Challa is not in this film. I thought they handled it really, really well, and I thought it made as much sense as it could given the circumstances. Now, where the story goes from there is really interesting because this film is basically broken up between the emotions of the characters in the movie trying to process loss and Wakanda being invaded by Namor and his army. Namor, I thought, was a fantastic villain, anti-hero sort of character in this movie for a couple of reasons. The main reason is that a lot of this film, specifically Namor and his motivations, felt like Ryan Coogler learned from Killmonger, and Namor is a more refined version of Killmonger's character. He's got better motivations, he's less selfish, but he's also this broken vessel, somebody who was given way too much responsibility at way too young of an age, and has been struggling to sort of figure out the balance between giving the people that look up to him a strong leader, while also attempting to process the anger he has towards what's led to his circumstances. And in that sense, I think it actually makes Namor a better version of Killmonger because his motivations are clearer, because he's a little bit more fleshed out, refined version of that character. Pino Cuerta was absolutely incredible as Namor. I thought he was so, so good in this role. He brought so much to this character and everything involving Namor and the world that he is a part of beneath Wakanda, it, deep in the ocean, that's what I would love to see more of. If we are going to get more Namor, I really, really hope that they explore more of his world because based on what we saw in this film, there is so much potential there to see even more of where Namor is from. Now, in addition to Namor, there are actually a lot of acting performances in this film that are really, really good. Letitia Wright is fantastic, but Angela Bassett, is probably going to win an Oscar for her performance in this film because she is on a different level. She is absolutely incredible. I was blown away by her performance in this film. She was already an incredible actor, but the performance she gives in Wakanda Forever, absolutely incredible. There are a lot of elements of this movie that feel like Ryan Coogler took the first film, kept what worked while also adjusting the areas that could have been improved upon. The action scenes in this film were so good. In addition to that, the CGI in this movie was significantly improved from the first Black Panther. And you know exactly what I'm talking about. You know what part of the first Black Panther I'm talking about. But from start to end, I thought the CGI in this film was really well done. And it was a really good showing from Marvel because over the last few years, their CGI quality has kind of started to dip a little bit. It's gotten a little bit frustrating as a viewer to see the CGI go from you know, Iron Man 1 and, and all the work that they put into Endgame and Thanos, and then it just sort of slowly decreasing in quality. The quality is here, the water effects, 
look fantastic the underwater scenes look fantastic the final fight way better than the first movie they really took to heart the criticisms of the final fight in the first movie and improved upon it in this second film and that's the kind of stuff i appreciate as special as the first black panther movie was it wasn't perfect no film is perfect but taking the things that that film did right and improving upon the areas that that movie could have used some improvement making this film better i really really thought it was incredibly well done it is also worth talking about the writing in this film i counted maybe two corny cringy dad jokes like corny marvel humor maybe once or twice in this movie this has a very somber tone it is being taken very seriously and i think that was the right choice there is a time and a place for marvel's brand of humor this movie is not it this is not the place to be doing goofy stupid dad joke humor cringy humor that sort of stuff no they handled this film incredibly well the writing was so well crafted everything about it really made you feel just this weight that all the characters felt of their king being gone and attempting to process that loss. And in terms of the writing, I thought one of the areas that they did a really good job of sort of teasing out where things might be headed, both in this movie and in the future, was who takes up the mantle as Black Panther. Now I'm gonna be honest, based on the posters, and I went back and watched a trailer that I had skipped for this movie because Marvel spoils way too much in their trailers, they pretty much give away who becomes the next Black Panther if you've seen the trailers or the posters for this movie. However, I think that they tease it enough throughout the film and I think that the decision of who they give the Black Panther mantle to has just enough conflict in it right down to the style of suit chosen for this new Black Panther that I think makes it a compelling enough choice. And when the film is over, it is not necessarily said or decided who the next Black Panther will be. At the end of the film, it does say Black Panther will return, but throughout this movie, and especially towards the end of the film, there are plenty of directions, and I think this was done on purpose, where they might want to mess around with who takes up the mantle long term. I think that's a great idea because the circumstances for making this movie sucked, it was awful, it was heartbreaking, and I think you might need to take a step back sort of think about where you want to go with this character moving forward before making any definitive decisions about who the next Black Panther should be. And lastly, if you are a cinematography person like I am, I like my movies to look good. Wakanda Forever looks incredible. There are so many cool shots in this movie. There are so many shots that look like they could be paintings. There are so many scenes and shots that are thought out specifically. A scene in a garage early on in this film that is all one tracking shot going between the characters, focusing on who's speaking. Beautiful. Some of the shots of Namor underwater could be hanging in a museum. They were so beautiful. And I just appreciated a lot of the little things that they did in this film in terms of cinematography, because it all helps it make it feel like a unique Marvel experience. And that's something that a lot of Marvel films have been lacking. So to see Wakanda Forever take the extra step of making sure the film feels unique and different and it's shot in a creative way, I appreciate that kind of stuff. I personally think Wakanda Forever is one of the best Marvel films that they've ever done, especially considering the circumstances, but I honestly think even if it was just standing on its own, it would absolutely succeed in just that. It is a phenomenal achievement in the MCU. It is a special movie. I think if you liked the first Black Panther, you're really going to enjoy this one as well. But I will say, unless you are made of stone, you are going to cry within like five minutes of this film like I did, probably a little bit throughout the rest of the movie and especially towards the end but it is a worthy successor to the first Black Panther film. Most importantly, I think it would make Chadwick really proud to see what they created.